हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अवंतिका डिजाइनरिंग सीरीज और ए डी एस एस वी लाइक टू कॉल इट एवरी वीक ऑन वेडनेसडे वी फीचर डिजाइन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर्स हु शेयर दर प्रोफेशनल जर्नी दर थॉट्स ऑन दर डोमेन ऑफ वर्क एंड डिजाइनरिंग वेर द वर्ल्ड ऑफ डिजाइन एंड इंजीनियरिंग मीट मेक श्योर यू फॉलोअर्स ऑन सोशल मीडिया इंस्टाग्राम लिंकड इन फेसबुक एंड ट्विटर एंड विद दैट लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद योर शो The last few years have seen the rise of design thinking and similar processes that help engineers and designers to create more user-centered products and services. They are great tools to spawn desirability in customers. Nevertheless, they often fall short in creating a sustainable business model. Business design is a remedy to this problem. Business design provides the tools and methods. to develop and test a business model at the same time it makes a difference between a service that is just a marketing gimmick and one that is sustainable business and to talk about this blended approach today in this episode we interact with sudhendra venkatesha murthy chief design officer at ibm ix on the canvas of digital sudhendra crafts positive experiences for people armed with insights empathy and behavioral understanding as an experienced strategist he helps craft vision for partners to see their worlds in action as a design leader he designs environments conducive to creating meaningful game changing and award winning designs sudendra has been recognized for his work through many awards including the most innovative product award by NIA in Singapore and that's why on our journey of discovering designering we talked to him about blending business and design hello sudendra welcome to avantika designering series it's a pleasure to host you on our show today hey thank you so much rohit it's it's my pleasure to be joining you in this conversation super so as an ice breaker i wish to ask you sudendra that while your organization and role is involved in user experience domain primarily how were you able to achieve this goal over the last 7 8 months while mostly working from home i mean what was your team secret sauce uh, to keep going uh, because you know it involves talking to users doing research about them so so how did it actually all seamlessly stitch together Yeah, that's a great question and uh, so relevant and apt, right? Now, what has happened in the, especially in the world of design, the user experience uh, domain, for the last seven, eight months, from what I have seen, is um, you know some of the work was was remote anyway. So we were doing some of that work, but um, the more high touch kind of work, the research work, the workshopping, etc. that is where we had to readjust and repivot uh, immediately so when we were faced with that question we actually created a whole host of materials to allow us to do it so uh, since that time we have done a lot of workshops virtually uh, i'm i'm glad to say that we went live with a lot of our work as well during this time and so on so in the beginning we had to sort of adjust to this uh, new virtual workshopping way and virtual research way so um there was a lot of preparation done at the time so actually if you ask a secret sauce the secret sauce is uh, what how we prepared in the beginning the second thing is the same thing of preparation even when you do say for example a virtual workshop for these kind of um, works uh, work uh, projects the way we prepare is what makes a difference so i'll give you a simple example when we used to you know when we do workshops with senior clients over a day or two two days and so on now we had to do that over a period of 5 days 2 hours each because you can't sit virtually on an entire day in on in front of your you know laptop doing your mural and so on so we had to prepare a lot more than ever before so preparation is one of the secret sauce the second thing is what this uh, gave us is also a nice little platform we call it as the i exponential 
which you must have seen on the LinkedIn as well. So we're posting it. So it is a it is a platform in which all those designers in my team we all come together every day for the last um, you know about eight months now. We have been uh, coming together in the morning one hour. We dedicate to design talks and learning and um, like master classes we go through we do book reading together we do a lot of things for eight months it's going non-stop every day one hour and that that is the other thing that's going on learning a lot and so preparation and learning i'm i would say is the um, sort of secret sauce for us that has taken us through these um, seven eight months and yeah that's what is going on even now wow interesting i think um uh, the pandemic uh, period gave all of us an opportunity uh, to come up with new ideas, new thought processes. In fact, uh, so then we started this podcast show while uh, we were in the phase of lockdown as well. <laughs> so moving on, uh, Sudhendra, you know, with over 17 years of industry experience and your interests include designing digital environments that shape behavior and habits and that enhance the quality of everyday life. The question that I have is, how has design helped you shape up as an individual? A lot. You know, um, I can look back over over my uh, years of experience in uh, doing design. And I can very easily relate to the, to the way I think. I'm, I'm able to connect those dots, which probably a lot of others struggle to do. But that is something, you know, um, that comes naturally. Naturally, I have a research mindset. I think of, before I do anything, I actually do some research before I go into that, right? Naturally, it, it is part of that. I'm naturally empathic. I'm more empathic probably than, um, you know, I don't have to try that. Hey, you know what? Between uh, 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock today, let me be more empathic, empathic. I don't need to do that. I'm naturally more empathic. I try to understand another person's um, view a lot more now than ever before. Um, my storytelling capabilities have um, also taken an upshot. Now, I all of, use all of these different skills I've learned over a period of time in my everyday life, and I don't think I can do without it now. In in in, uh, in terms of uh, taking my children through their assignments, for example, I use all of these things and I actually impart that knowledge to them as well. Um, in um, you know in the other various activities, if for example you are in a family situation and where you need to you know um, uh, do um, some certain thing, I advise my family members also to think from a research point of view, right? So instead of jumping into Thing. So, you know, trying to under address the problem space more. So these things is what um, is uh, has changed me and has shaped me as an individual. And I, I use all of these skills I've learned um, in the industry. I've been a design leader now. I was a design practitioner. So the leadership automatically. And when you add design as the potential um, into the leadership, um, overall leadership angle, you get a very... Um, strong and um, uh, high quality leadership that comes out and all of these are human centered right the first thing you think of is human centered you don't think of uh, doing things for for things sake or you don't uh, jump into solutions because you know that's so right in front of you you actually go back take a step back all of these um, characteristics that um, i use to design environments which are probably mainly are digital uh, they are the same ones that I use in my own uh, life. In fact, um, at this point, I must tell you, there is a beautiful book called Designing Life, uh, which um, was released, I think, in 2018. So, um, so, again, using the principles of design and how you can even shape your own life. So it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, I would encourage all of us to you know, read it as well. Wow, interesting. I'll definitely catch up a copy of this um, I think the title itself sounds very, very interesting. Sudhendra, you studied MBA and today you are the Chief Design Officer at IBM Interactive Experiences. Can you take us through your professional journey and this transition from the world of uh, management and business to designing? <clears throat> so I'm the Chief Design Officer for IBM IX in India. So um, 
that's one thing i want to uh, be clear on the uh, my professional journey that uh, so my, the mba for example i did after i had decided to be a a designer so i was already a designer and during that time i wanted to learn a lot more of uh, business side of things so to improve my business acumen that is why i took mba and i am the better for it because one of the big things about ix is the uh, way we could do business by design that's our proposition and we call ourselves and pride ourselves to be business designers so the mba helped me directly in becoming a business designer that i am today but where i started was very interesting when i started off you know many years ago um it was uh, design was a support function uh, at that time um, i i was doing a lot of design practice uh, practitioner kind of work right creating screens and so on and so forth that is very interesting i had to i loved doing that you want to get your hands dirty doing all of that stuff but i was not involved in the process i was not employing the process of design like the way i wanted it to i was not involved in the organization change for example right no no one bothered me uh, bothered to ask me hey you know what how do i redesign the hr process that we have in our organization how do i cre- create a continuous learning program for the employees nobody asked those questions so at that time the design was was a more of a uh, the role it played was was like a support function you had great technologies and making those technologies look good was one of the principles of design that's about it really not not any not not more than that at least when i started and in those organizations that i was at the time but then i realized the power of it when i came into the contact of the design uh, methodology that that is there uh, that we all know very well today as design thinking so when i came in contact of that i was able to see the meaning of why i do what i do i actually uh, there was an aha moment for me when i started doing that and um, that is what i even today that's what i do i i use the first principles of design i make sure that um, we follow the framework or the method of design the right way and um, and that's that's what i impart in in all the people that report into me in my team and i and uh, work closely with me the clients i work with the stakeholders in the uh, internally uh, that i have um, or even externally so all of them all i do is making sure that we uh, unpack the design framework in the best way possible in that particular situation that they have so uh, and the mba especially as i said has helped me understand the markets the the business acumen that is needed to um, make these things the the kind of value propositions that you can create um, and and all of that um, uh, aspects that is needed so that's that's my you know um, in uh, a journey in short and the mba is relevant in there so wow that's interesting sudendra it's it's like the blended approach that we keep talking about of how you are blending the world of uh design business and technology all together in an interesting way and and i think um you're quite fortunate to um be having an experience and knowledge of all of these three areas and and the entire power of putting all of them together and and actually uh leading a a, a business organization thank you rohit yeah it is definitely a privilege uh to uh, to have that and to be able to you know think from these different angles each each aspect that you shared the experience the the human centeredness the business as well as technology have all grown and have had different dimensions from uh, you know uh, from the time i started so it's been great to be part of that journey and to be able to connect those dots hey did you know ibm ix is a partner at the stem week that engages with more than 300 educators from over 200 schools to support hands-on applied learning activities for K-12 students in the United States of America. Students also learn from experts from IBM IX how to apply design thinking to their app designs. And winners of this challenge will get an opportunity to work with IBM IX designers to further their app development. Super So as a uh, 
you know, as a as a business leader, uh, Sudhendra, can you share one of your most fulfilling experiences of designing? I mean, can you share either a problem statement or a client story, uh, something that you worked on and and you felt very happy, very uh, it, it 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 was a very interesting experience for you in your in your journey yeah there are there are a, bu- a couple of them that come to my mind uh, rohit when i was doing uh, design intervention for a bank in uh, india the lot uh, the the whole proposition was to be able to uh, create a connected experience for their um, employees and a lot of those employees were were not very great in english so when i had to take them through the whole design thinking method with them i had to do it in kannada they were based in uh, bangalore and um, you know we had to do it in uh, in kannada fortunately i speak kannada that is my mother tongue so what happened is that um, and i'm not used to doing this in kannada by the way right so it is it is actually very difficult to get onto your local language the, the concepts you learn globally so what happened on that day was uh, when i started uh, this whole you know uh, presentation of mine the chairman said hey can you please also speak in kannada does anyone know and i said okay let me try and it was a, f- a very fulfilling experience because the people that were there they were able to understand it the you know the um, junior most people uh, that were there that that had difficulty in understanding the sophisticated english that we sometimes um, Uh, get enamored in uh, so they they were able to understand the concepts those those large big um, concepts which are loaded uh, you know they were able to understand in their local language and it made a huge difference and we we were able to you know go through the whole it was very interesting t- for me and it was a fulfilling one which which uh, which is something i was very happy about now um there there are, there are other things there are a couple of other things that i can think that in fact quite a few actually but once another time what happened is uh, when i was doing a presentation with uh, with a with a large bank um, not an indian bank an australian bank there was this person the head of their um, strategy who was there and then i got up to tell him about our credentials and he said you know what i don't want to hear the regular spiel of what design thinking can do for example i want you to help me solve the problem that i have currently he said let's do a workshop now right that's what he actually said and um, you know we were not prepared for it we we had gone for uh, something else but he said why don't you take it as a challenge and i'll give you a problem right now let's go and solve it i i'm not a person who will say no to um, a challenge so i said yeah let's do it okay and immediately he shared um, a certain a uh, problem that he wanted to be solved in his um, organization in one of his f- core functions of the organization so um i was there and um, listened to what he had to say picked it up immediately you know uh, s- discussed with him the nuances of that problem and then you know went back prepared something the next day he gave a little more time and then you know i i was able to understand a little more of that particular problem and then i traveled back to uh, melbourne after a, after a week or so then we took him through the whole um, you know solution that we had based on what he had shared now what it did was it is amazing uh, the way this this happened this this is so so very um, fulfilling because it, it did not start with your regular presentations etc it started off as a kind of a challenge and then when i went there when i presented this whole uh, solution to him um, eventually a couple of months later on what what happened is the whole conversation uh, that uh, we were ha- having with this bank changed into um, um, a higher value kind of a conversation right suddenly we became their preferred partners in what they were trying to do he was just testing us out he was just actually later on i came to know he was just trying what we can do because he was not aware of ibm's strengths in those areas so when i was able to share this um, this solution approach to him he was able to see that we suddenly became the preferred partner from actually not being you know uh, there in his eyes at all so that was a fantastic fulfilling uh, experience uh, the state bank of india work that that we are doing as well again um is amazing so we are we are bringing the digital 
aspects of the bank into uh, you know uh, into the whole of uh, india right in fact through that we are enabling a lot of people in tier 2 tier 3 uh, to be able to bank and you know the uh, because of the covid there was a lot of new launches that happened right the pm cares fund came about and so on so all of these we were able to quickly bring on to the banking platform simply because um, we were able to we were already with the uh, digital banking platform that is out there so that is another fulfilling thing that uh, i'm involved in it is amazing to you know to be able to enable so many of our uh, citizens in india with um, with the banking ability so like these um, rohit there are there are a few of those i'm uh, fortunate to be part of which is uh, very fulfilling wow that's that's really interesting i have a funny question here what do you call user experience in kannada it's <laughs> <laughs> a great question um let me think about it and come back <laughs> okay so I'm, i'm i'm embarrassed that i actually don't have an answer right here for you uh, i just thought yeah. i i i i was wondering this that um, how would it have uh, uh, you know been an experience for you to uh say that okay we we do user experience and express that in 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 a local language but yeah i think that is really interesting uh, to see that how large companies in fact ibm is a global multinational company but how uh, you know we are going out there and creating uh, products that are locally uh, relevant uh, you know to to the audience and and i think that's a very very interesting yeah. perspective another thing that i had uh, sudendra while going through one of your articles uh, you know designing the design culture is is a setting and i came across a line which said that when there is no clarity the design provides clarity can you talk to us more about this and 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 tell what what do you exactly mean by this yeah and and thank you so much for going through the article and um, you know uh, it 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 means a lot to me thanks for uh, sharing lines and i look forward to your feedback as well uh, what i meant there was you know where does design thrive you know designed methods are designed to work in ambiguous and chaotic situations that's where it thrives that's when you use design uh, for for maximum impact design is rigor it is about being able to put through your heart and soul and go through the paces that is needed the hard yards to actually get through the, the kind of research that you do and the ability to see things from different angles different perspectives that's what makes the value of design so high and when you do that in this kind of a, a situation which is am, ambiguous or chaotic that is when you you start to you you can only glean that insights you can actually uh, pick up that points of clarity when you do all of these things and design is built in that way design as i said is is a it brings a great mix of instinct and intelligence it is about you know what you know internally inside of you your own expertise and experience and what you can bring from outside as well the intelligence that you can bring from the world outside and that is what is 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 design uh, right and when you do that you start to see clarity that uh, comes out of in this situation that is much needed in this situations and that's what you see uh, happening in uh, when you are you know redesigning a brand for example you really don't know if it works or not so you use these design principles when there is a merger when there is a new function that needs to be established when there is a new product that you want uh, to be launched uh, all of these are situations which are not um, which can go either way right anyway which can, it can be successful it need not be all of that stuff you don't know the markets you don't know the geography the cultures those are the places where design with its mix of instinct and intelligence it being rigorous it can help you bring that clarity that's what i actually meant there well interesting um i mean it's a it's a very well uh, written structured article and um, you know uh, to our listeners you should definitely go and uh, read this it, it's, it's something which is very well expressed so sudendra 
uh, one of the other interesting things is when we talk about IBM IX, there's so many interesting projects that are developed. Uh, some of these include Fortis Healthcare, Hyundai uh, Heavy Industries, uh, you know, you've got BNSF Railways, you spoke about, um, you know, to banks. The question that I have is, how do you develop this multi-domain understanding approach? Uh, I mean, a bank is very different than a railways and a heavy industry than a healthcare organization. How how do you build understanding in, in, in all these domains? Yeah, you, you, are, you are so spot on, right? Uh, IBM that way works with all of these different um, industries. And uh, the company has been around for 100 plus years, right? We, we are, we've been reinventing, you know, all the time. And in that, uh, in, during that process, we've, we've had some deep expertise in all of these different industries. I have the access to some of the um, most uh, reputed and renowned people uh, who represent their industries and domains. Um, you know, be it banking, be it healthcare, uh, they all work in uh, in IBM and in different um, parts of IBM, and I have access to them. So the way we develop this multi-domain understanding is by a combination of all of these approaches by by getting them into into our mix. So if you want to redesign an airport experience, you're going to uh, speak to people who have that experience before. You're going to speak to technologists who have worked on uh, the uh, various aspects that you need in airport, the baggage carousels, the um, security systems, and all of that stuff. So you have access to all of them. And we have been doing this for such a long time that we have a knowledge base that is unparalleled in the world. So I'm fortunate and glad that I have access to them. And we we call them in uh, when we are doing this kind of uh, thinking and this kind of work. What we bring to the table is a fresh approach. As designers, uh, we we are not biased by uh, some of the uh, past as well. So we bring in a fresh approach. Our technologists bring in the posi- brings in the possibilities, and these domain experts bring in the various perspectives that are relevant, the deep knowledge that is relevant. So when you combine all of them, you have a great uh, breakthrough outcome, as we call it, coming out of it. So that's the you know way we work. So then they're well expressed. Uh, I mean, when you, you know, mentioned about the way you work, the, the, the question that I have is every company works hard to develop a unique culture, processes and habits that drive their success. What I wish to know is what makes IBM more creatively competitive? IBM's culture has gone through a hundred plus years of, uh, um, of a journey. Uh, we stand for being essential in the in the world on this planet in the societies and the and the geographies that we serve and so on and so forth so that's that's the culture so the fact that you know ibm um, has been doing this for over a century is testimony to uh, the very fact that you need a, a strong culture in, in in a business the design itself came about in about 66 when uh, the visionary leader uh, Thomas Watson Jr. proclaimed in a memo that good design is good business. This was back in 1966 to all his senior most leaders. So we've been uh, fortunate enough to be with the uh, world of design for that time, from that time. And uh, we've come up with some really, really innovative pieces of work, trendsetters uh, that have moved the world forward. And that's what we stand for even, even today. Cutting to 2012, 2013, when we started using the design thinking methodology slash framework into all that we do, uh, there is very there is another momentous thing that happened in IBM where we made it a conscious uh, intervention in all of our uh, stuff that we do. The the design thinking approach that we take today it permeates the um, HR world, the the learning world, the uh, procurement, um, you name it. Even, even the redefinition of the organization constructs, the units of organization, all of that uh, uses the design thinking approach. Now, uh, to make that happen, it has taken a few years to do that, but to make that happen, 
uh, in such a large organization is uh, is amazing and that's the um, culture that uh, we have today the uh, kind of um, stuff uh, that we do to connect the dots between different kinds of people that are there different stakeholders different experts and that is what keeps ibm uh, competitive and creatively competitive as you call it and on the top of the game uh, we have defined career paths for designers we have um, given a lot of um, focus on the kind of work that we do in be it in ibm ix or in the overall ibm design uh, that we have so we've given a lot of focus on what we do uh, we've given importance to the human centeredness of things and we've always brought in new ways of working new facets of design be it service design speculative design all of that we have brought in all of that uh, concepts uh, as and when they evolve the desops is a big one that uh, ibm uh, has been you know endorsing and advocating for a while now so all these different aspects especially in the design side i'm talking about uh, means that you you are you're constantly evolving and that's our, our culture as well right to be able to evolve and to be remaining essential in that, all that we do that's what i believe makes ibm you know on the top of the game and ahead of the curve hey did you know ibm ix has been announced as adobe digital experience delivery quality solution partner of the year 2020 in the emea that's europe the middle east and africa region for their deep expertise and excellent partnership with adobe wow interesting i think um, this this one feat which is very very challenging to achieve in the world of business but if if you are able to do it successfully i think it 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 really works well so you know talking about the space uh, sudendra that you operate in uh, you know we are living in a time when our digital and physical experiences seamlessly blur into one and user experience designers are playing a critical role in shaping the connection between them while addressing the positive and negative side effects um, that may perpetuate my question is how to design for this multiverse of interconnected products what's your view on that it's a you know a uh, sort of a loaded kind of question right so that that is why we exist as designers to be able to uh, take on all of these different challenges those challenges are becoming apparent as we go through uh, life as well uh, what was not a challenge a few years ago uh, has now become a challenge you know we always thought facebook was such a great thing to have uh, which connects people and so on but today we see Uh, the uh, problem with it as well you know it it uh, it creates this false sense of um, uh, progress and uh, you know um, uh, in people that they they probably don't even understand that they are just craving for likes there was this beautiful quote i saw somewhere uh, you know a few years ago maybe 20 years ago uh, 30 years ago people wanted to be space uh, scientists and astronauts whereas today the ambition of the youngsters is to get as many likes as they can get on facebook so we have kind of diluted the whole uh, thinking through all of these things so the negative side effects uh, you're talking about there you go those are the ones that is going on now that is what is the challenge for designers right so to be able to address it we have to understand and uh, and you know really look at what exactly is the role of technology especially you know when when these technologies happen that blend the digital and physical experiences the role of technology is to extend people's reach they are like tools that extend human reach before you invented or came up with a stick uh, people used to climb up the trees to pull down the fruits but once the stick came in you were able to reach the fruits from from the ground right that's that's what it is when the wheel wheel also a great technology a great tool that came about what did it do it allowed us to reach places faster and you know those places you never reached before so it extended a human reach that's the role of technology and when we understand the very fundamental aspect of it you can now understand what are those things that people are craving for the reach what is that they are looking to reach what is the need 
that they have when you kind of understand that and then use technology to actually you know solve that problem uh, while remaining completely rooted in exactly what uh, the welfare of people then you know uh, we are able to um, create the uh, right design for the multiverse of interconnected products as you uh, rightly called it it is a today we live in a world which is you know beautifully connected which means that you got to look at all of those angles which you never saw before so the responsibility is much higher so are we ready to take that responsibility and that that is what i i think uh, we need to start doing we got to get our voices um, clearly uh, taken taken through the worlds of uh, businesses where they're making these decisions so when we do that i think we are able to you know get to the bottom of uh, de- designing the right thing for the for these interconnected products well wow, that's so, so beautifully expressed and you know taking a cue from you, you know what you just said you spoke about the wheel you spoke about the stick in fact in my point of view everything around us has been designed in some way and all design ultimately produces an emotion out there uh we experience an emotional reaction to our environment moment by moment a uh, like or dislike joy frustration we feel it and how can designers add an emotional effect on the user while well, they are designing usable and functional products i i i would like you to share your views on this one a great question um you know when there is good design you just know it you just feel it you know that's what the role of good design is right around you um when you have an apple uh, phone you feel good when you have it around you it does its things beautifully so that's what the role of um you know the um, emotional aspect of design is it it just makes you feel uh, so good but the feel part of it is quite uh, quite deep and that is why the the tools that we have allows us to look all of these uh, you know different aspects of what is meant by you know uh, liking and what is meant by joy and how does that differ from one person to another how does it differ from one culture to another so you look at all of that stuff and then you start to create delight in design so today we it is not enough to actually create usable products or uh, functional products anymore you got to create aesthetically pleasing but also emotionally aligned kind of products that align with you you know especially in these conversational interfaces that you get to right so um you know you can use the psychology so what we do to uh, create that is psychology based uh, design uh, i'll give you an example i was working on um, on a credit card work a few years ago me and my uh, uh, teammate my partner so we were working on something and we had an opportunity to recommend them various kinds of credit cards right so we could say hey you know what's your spending what is it that you will do um, and so on and so forth uh, how do you want to use it what are the benefits you want you can have those transactional questions on the other hand you could also have conversational questions like if i was a credit card card expert what would i ask my user i would say hey what's your lifestyle like let me know what's your lifestyle like let me know what are the things that you really like and what you don't like and so on so a completely different conversational way of approach is what we took right for that 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 gave the delight to the user because it was not about transactions anymore it was about actually um reaching to the deepest parts of the the user now that's what you me- you need to do here as well in in every aspect whatever we uh, try to do you got to go to the deepest aspects of why people do what they do and what are the uh, aspects of delight in the whole journey mapping we have a concept called moments that matter and in those moments that matter you pick out those which are which give joy and delight to people and that is what you build out and therefore uh, the whole concept of mvp we don't use the mvp concept the minimum viable product we use a concept of mde called the minimum delightful experience what can you give as delightful experience you kind of take that and then you develop that minimum delightful experience so those those are all the you know different aspects that go into um you know uh, providing this 
you know, emotional alignment, as I may call it. Mark Hazenzal speaks beautifully about how you can um, create an experience which is emotionally fulfilling. And he has got some beautiful you know, um, notes about that. Um, and, you know, that's something that um, I have been inspired by. Wow, interesting. In fact, you know, one of the um, aspects that you mentioned, uh, you were talking about credit card and various uh, products. And, uh, you know, in this in, in this world of new technologies, which is very exciting, um, the issue is that we fall short if they don't address human needs and enhance the user experience. The question that I have is, how can designers make sure that they focus on creating human-centered experiences in the face of these new technologies? Uh, in the face, so the technologies are always evolving, right? So uh, you can, um, it's been going on for a while. It's just going rapidly now than ever before. The whole focus of us should be to forecast the future. So concepts such as speculative design, I spoke about the models of speculative design that combines uh, the futures thinking as well as design thinking. Those those are the uh, things that one can use where you can say what is your preferred future that you want, not just what will happen, but what should happen, right? So um, that's, that's the... Um, that's the power or responsibility that a designer carries. Uh, one of the most uh, inspiring quotes that I, I have come across and that guides me even today is what Tim Brown said uh, in one of his talks. He said, designers create worlds that, that doesn't exist yet. They create a world that doesn't exist. So it is only in their head. And that is a great responsibility to have. And that world is full of these new technologies. Now, technology shouldn't really uh, bother you. What should bother you is what is going to happen with it. And, um, you know, uh, being responsible for it. I'm a big fan of responsible design and um, evangelizing it. So what does it mean to be responsible in this world? And what is it that you can um, you can do when you're creating these preferred futures? So uh, that when we have that concept in our mind, when we have it at the back of our mind all the time, uh, we will be able to, I think, do justice to all of these um, technologies that is coming up. And it is it is rapidly changing. Every day, there is something new and there, there is something you need to be ready with. So you've got to be on top of all of those things. Interesting. And that, Sudhendra, brings me to our last question on our show. You know, while we understood some of these elements, we uh, coined this term at Avantika University called as designering, which is the base ideology that we follow um, in terms of, uh, you know, coaching our students, uh, a blended approach of the world of design and engineering. I see that at IBM IX, you follow the same philosophy. Do you think that uh, the next decade and and more times uh, to come ahead, this blended approach is where a very interesting um, action point lies in future? What's, what's your view on that? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, so, see, when we say design, the, the whole point is about action. So, design is doing as well. right? It is as important to do as it is to think. Uh, it's a lot of doing. Right? Empathy alone, if, without, if it does not combine with the prototyping, it does not do much. It, it's about doing. So, I am, um, uh, you know... Um, completely aligned with this thought. So this blended approach where, in fact, in our own design thinking approach also, we call it the observe, reflect, and make. You observe, then you think about what's going on, you reflect upon it, you kind of connect all of those dots, and then you make, uh, you give life to those ideas. And then you go back again, observe, reflect, and make. That's the loop, uh, design thinking loop that um, we propose propose in uh, IBM as well. So it is absolutely uh, the uh, doing part that combines with the um, thinking part that um, makes a lot of uh, lot of difference, and we do we do it all the time in uh, in you know uh, in the work that we do when we want to give when we are working with our clients when we want to show them how we are uh, thinking about it we actually create stuff and show to them we make stuff uh, that is the best way in fact we have a lot of maker spaces within our um, studios as well 
Now, all of that goes back to the importance of doing, and uh, that's that's really at the heart of what we do. It's the um, thought plus action. That's the design uh, philosophy. Wow, this has been a really interesting conversation, Sudhindra. So many interesting perspectives in terms of connecting the dots, in terms of uh, you know new uh, concepts in the world of design and, and where things are moving to, uh, to talking about how do we use delight as a concept uh, uh, you know, to serve our customers. It was a pleasure hosting you on our uh, show, Sudhindra. Thank you so much for doing this conversation with us. Hey, thank you so much, Rohit. And, uh, you know, uh, thanks for getting me on this. It's a, uh, I'm very glad that, uh, that I'm here sharing my thoughts and I enjoyed the uh, conversation with you. And I wish you, wish yourself and Avantika University all the very best in you know, whatever you're doing. Thank you. Hey there, we hope you enjoyed our show. Do write to us on ads at the rate avantika.edu.in. We look forward to your opinions, feedbacks and suggestions of speakers you would like us to host on this show. Do tune in our channel next week on Wednesday for a new story on Hub Hopper or wherever you get your podcast from. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter.